Hey, yeah. Hi. Hi, everybody. How are you? Uh, I think we're on now. I think we're going. Uh, let me just see here. Let me make sure I'm uh, I'm up. Uh, let me see here, Alex. Oh, see, hey Bennett. Um, uh, hey Bennett. Okay, uh, just gotta make sure everybody's up and running, uh, so that I can. Uh, Oh, listen to the thunder outside. We've got thunder going for us. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, there we are. We're going. We're on. All right. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, this is our little um, show that we're going to do on uh, on Zoom. Uh, let me turn off the waiting room here, just in case anybody wants to call. Let me see here. Enable waiting room. Okay. Uh, uh, un disable the waiting room. All right. Okay, so here we go. We're just waiting now for some people to call. By the way, look at this. There's gone. You know what happened? I'm I'm shaving and I I took off the uh, the trimmer part. The guy just get these areas here. You know to trim those up, kind of cut them off. You know and so on. And I forgot to put it back on when I went like this to dry. And I put a big swath right here. Right here, I think right here, and um, so I had to cut all this off, and it's and it's still there's a little bit of it there, but I'm trying to grow it back. Let me see if anybody calls. Nobody calls. I mean, we'll just not do this thing, right? Uh, by the way, while I've got you here, and uh, if you're if you um, kind of like look at me on uh, on Facebook. If you go over to YouTube, uh, you can subscribe to me. If you go to Alex Bennett YouTube, you go to my page, you can subscribe. And the reason I need subscribers is for some reason, those assholes at YouTube took me off. Yeah, they did. They took me off. Uh, they, they took off a lot of my, they didn't take me off. They took off a lot of my, uh, I'm trying to get some pills here because I want to. Okay, no, I have to uh, go to the bathroom. <laughs> mm. There we go. That's at least one ibuprofen. Anyway, um, they didn't take me off, but what they did is all of a sudden I go there, I have a list of how many subscribers I have, and it lists all my subscribers. And all of a sudden there were 60 of them missing. And I don't know why 60 of them are missing. I have no idea. So what I wanted people to do was to uh, just go over there and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're already subscribed, you'll find out when you go over there. If you've been eliminated, then you can resubscribe. But uh, I went up to 157. I'm back to uh, I'm back to 1,056 rather. Uh, you know, it, it, it they're, they're horrible. I just I'm so disgusted with YouTube. I'm disgusted with Facebook. I mean, you know, oh, here we go. Here comes somebody. Ah, yes, it's Andrew Deutsch. Hello, Andrew. How are you? Oh, we need your microphone on. Turn your microphone on. I, I actually, I can probably turn it on from here. No, the reason I turned it on. The oh, okay, good. I had I had something noisy in the background. I, if there were other people, I needed to shut that off before. No, you're where again, Andrew? Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. Now, is that a uh, Blue, uh, blue screen in back of you, or is that the actual room you're in? Oh, it's a fake. It's not a. It's a fake screen. Oh, and that's what Cleveland, Ohio, looks like. Yeah, yeah. We we have Miami beaches in uh, in Cleveland. No, okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'll... So anyway, how's everything uh, your way today? No, here, I'll, I'll put my my vast my vast fortune behind me. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but how 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 is it? Uh, let me let me see how we're going across here. How how's everything in Cleveland? I I don't know. I don't leave my house, but uh, it's Ohio is uh, starting to grow. I think after this Fourth of July weekend, where people were out being like idiots, in two weeks we'll see. Yeah, yeah. It's wow. the the problem is when when you don't get that instant reaction to your behavior, people people tend to. Now, who is, mu who is Music Bill? Are you there, Music Bill? Here you go. Okay, I think this is a, uh, I think this is a, uh, 
I'm going to remove him. Yes, remove him. And I'm going to go back to putting this enable waiting room so that uh, people can't get in unless I let them in. Is that a better background? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's angelic. That's <laughs> wonderful. How they told me not to show my nipples on the screen. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello, hello, there. hello there, Len. How are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Except that I cut off my beard. By oh. accident. Well, by, it was by accident. <laughs> and I cut a swath through it, and I had to take everything off. I was growing on everything on the sides and everything. So now I, I just have a mustache. First beard, first beard I've ever had, I started growing it in November. And I've always had the mustache, but yeah, uh, my wife said, grow a beard. So well, I, that's what I, a lot of people have been doing that. You know, they've been indoors. They have nothing to do. So growing yeah. a beard is some activity. <laughs> it gives me something to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, your, your, years ago, I had a beard until after 9-11. And yeah. I was I was going through an airport. I was living overseas at the time, and I was I came to the states. I was in upstate Michigan. Yeah, nine eleven had happened maybe six three months. It was still whacking at security, and the guy said, "Hey, Osama, have a seat at airport security. We got to search you." And I said, "I my name isn't Osama." And <laughs> wow! After getting all the hassle, I said, "Screw it! I shaved off the beard, and nobody thought I was an Arab again." Wow! Here comes Brian Neary. Uh, he. Uh, I put up the, uh, hello, Brian. How are you? Oh, he's got a, there we go. There hey, he is. Brian, how are you? Um, There's most of them. There he is. Yeah. Uh, we, um, uh, Brian, uh, uh, we, uh, we, we, we set up the, the room, the waiting room, because it looked like I was starting to get some Zoom bombing. So I didn't want that to happen. Maria was calling again. Hmm? Maria was calling again? No, this was a different name. This was an actually an Anglo name. Oh. Not one of those non-Anglo names we've been getting. So anyway. I'm in solitary confinement. I'm in that one of those little rooms today. Oh, one of those little rooms, the isolation rooms? Yes, I told the guys I had to go to a meeting. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just did the same thing with my wife. Wow. There's, nobody, actually... there's nobody there. No, they're all down the down the little ways right there, but it's all good. You actually have people there? Yeah, yeah. We have. Uh, we're still ironing out everything for the new Lodi facility. So, yeah, yeah a lot of big meetings. All the groups got to buy everything, have everybody hired. All the while, while a lot of businesses in the United States are hurting. Yeah, Brian's yeah. isn't. Tell them what you do. Tell them what you do, Brian. <laughs> Yeah, we do detection. So we test DNA for anthrax and infectious disease. Oh, wow. infectious, infectious disease is the big trendy hot thing right now. So. Yeah, I, that's what I heard. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I just found out from another another friend in this group that uh, two people um, tested positive in our, one of our other facilities. So I've only heard of four people so far, and I know a lot of people here. So That's pretty good. Yeah, the first two were in March. And they were sick, uh, flu-like symptoms, stayed home. And then after a few weeks, they or a couple of weeks, they found out they have COVID. I don't know about these two people I was asking, but they don't have details yet. So. Well, yeah. I, uh, here, in, here in New York, uh, we had a, uh, another lecture today from our governor. Uh, <laughs> and he was saying, we're doing okay. You know, yeah. we're, we're keeping the numbers down. As a matter of fact, since his last reopening, his last phase in New York City, it has gone down rather than up. And uh, we only man. had like eight deaths today. We've gone as low as five, but we stay around five, six, seven, eight, around in there, yeah. nine, which is fine. You know, I mean, it's not fine. There's some dead people as a result. Yeah, of unless you're one of the five. <laughs> huh? well, if you're one of the five, it really doesn't matter anymore, does it? No, it no. doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, well, but he, he uses, like I said, in business, in like, you know, in here, I mean, he uses the right charts. And when he talks, he says the right stuff, you know, using a three day average and all these things. You don't want to have one day as a three and one as a five and think, well, you're going higher. You use those averages. So he's really smart on the stuff he's doing. Three day rolling average. Yeah. I, um, uh, I, I, our, our governor is so smart that I wish he were running this country right now during this crisis <laughs> because he knows what he's doing. 
Yep. You know, he, I'm sure he is not a scientist. I'm sure he didn't know much about this subject before it started. But once it started, he ramped up his knowledge on it. And I think he's one of the big experts in the country now. And yet nobody yeah. says, let's bring him down to Washington and tell us how he did it in New York. Yeah. Well, how could they? He has a D next to his name. Right. Yeah. He's, he's a, you know, these false dichotomies that, that we live under now, either you're with us or you're against us. That's the stuff that, that, that just creates nothing but dissent. Yeah. If you don't agree with my policy, you must be a Marxist. And these are the 10 reasons why, you know, and they're total opposites. Yeah. You say, well, I agree on some of these things. No, it's a total opposite. You have one opinion. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, when you, I don't mind listening to an opinion from someone who has a different mindset than I do, if they have facts to back it up. I still may not agree, but I can appreciate where they got their information from. But when it yeah, comes yeah, out of mythology or, or this, you know, the way this, this false foundation that we build all our houses with, mm -hmm. where one guy, some radical says some shit, and then another guy repeats it. And before long, it ends up being on something somewhat legitimate. And then it gets picked up as news. Oh, we have to show both sides of the story. Well, you only have to show both sides if the other side isn't a lie. Well, the, yeah, the, the, the idea that uh, I used to argue this w at radio stations I was at is they would say, well, you know, you have to get both sides of the, of the, of the, of the story. And I said, yeah, but every, people on other shows are doing the other side of the story. Mm. Why must I adhere to something which you say the other side of the story when I feel there is no other side to the story? You know? Yeah, I, I got in an argument. I, I posted something about the, the Confederate statues that what they really were were self-purchased participation trophies from traders that lost. And this guy said to me, well, if that was your great-great-grandfather who fought for the South, would you be calling him a traitor? And I said, yes. And if my great-grandfather was a bank robber, I would call him a bank robber. If he was a rapist, I would call him a rapist. Because the fact that he's related to me doesn't give him permission to do shit and not get called on it. <laughs> that wasn't the answer he was looking for. Well, well um, who, was the, um, who was the black lawyer? We have a street named after him here. Um, uh, oh, boy. About 150 <laughs> years ago. But, it was on the Supreme Court? No. Oh, it was just a, 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 what? No. Uh, I, you know, my mind's a blank. Thurgood. Thurgood no, 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 no. Way before that. Like 150 years ago. Uh, uh, Thurgood Marshall wasn't he like 150? No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, that wasn't that long ago. That was that was. But anyway, amazing. they they did, somebody somewhere tore down a statue of him, and I'm going, what for? Yeah, you know. Yeah, I the, mean, the, the, hey, I got a Harriet Tubman statue about five blocks from me. I guess they can go after next because it looks <laughs> too much because it looks too much like Mrs. <laughs> Butterworth. The <laughs> Confederate, Confederate statues went up during the Jim Crow era the whole segregation to remind black people their place. And, and it's well documented. They went up in the night, most of them went up and there's a chart, I have to dig for it. That most of them went up in the 19, between 1918 and 1925 as a way of saying, remember who we are, don't, don't get to you know what. Yeah. And, and now we're there. And the funny thing is, you know, in other countries where they, there's no Mussolini statues teaching history in Italy, they know the history without seeing the statue. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. there are no statues it's, of Hitler anywhere in Germany. Yeah. Um, what, do you guys, have... what do you What do you think about the uh, the monument in South Dakota? The uh, you know the. Oh, you mean Mount uh, Rushmore? Rush, 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 Rush. well, what, what do you What do you think about that? Well, to take that down would be uh, a lot of work. <laughs> yep. and a couple of reality, sticks of diamonds. Uh, I, I, you know, I mean, I have no argument. Hello, Shecky. How are you? Very good, Ben. How are you? Fine. I have no, I had no argument with uh, Washington or Jefferson. I mean, these were guys who lived in a certain time where the economics dictated you had to have slaves. Slave yeah. labor was part of the economics. But they were decent enough people. I think uh, uh, Washington freed all his slaves upon his death. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jefferson used to uh, have babies by them, you know. Right, right. The problem so. with Mount Rushmore is we had a treaty with the, the Sioux and the 
Definitely Lakota. Tribe. That's the mm -hmm. trouble with, with the land itself, the argument right. of the land. But, you know, uh, uh, the, and, and I agree because they said they, they were supposed to make some kind of restitution to the Native Americans for the use of that land, and then they didn't. Another, you know, Indian yeah. treaty that we violated. Uh, and uh, they're still fuming over that one, and they have every right to, you know. Yeah, there's, I'm no constitutional scholar, but I, I forget what article it is, yeah. that we, as a, as a nation, have to abide by treaties that we sign. And then by taking that back from them, we actually violated the Constitution. Yeah. And we, we had offered them money, they refused. So we said, well, screw it, you don't want the money, we'll just keep it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I don't know. What statue would you tear, tear down, Shecky, if you had the chance? I wouldn't tear down any of them. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm th you know, you know what got me, I found out. They, when I was growing up, I lived on Telegraph Hill in San Francisco. And uh, uh, at the top of Telegraph Hill is Coit Tower. And if you go up to Coit Tower, there's this circle this, that you can drive around. Okay. The parking, yeah. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. so it was parking in it, circle. but you can also drive around it. Mm -hmm. And in the center of the circle is Columbus, the statue yeah. of Columbus. Yep. Yeah. They w went after that. Oh, they ruined yeah. my fucking childhood. <laughs> <laughs> the protesters yeah, Columbus like is, the bill. Yeah. Well, what's right. the problem? What was the problem with Columbus? I mean, outside of the fact that he said he discovered a place where there were already people, uh, you know. But did he up. ever say he discovered it? You I don't know. know. Thing? I think that was uh, someone else making that determination. He, he did. discovered the West Indies, gave the clap to all the natives, and uh, and, and raped and killed. Home. Yeah, and then went home, and then he came back, and he. Yeah. I think he actually came back to what is now the United States. No, he never landed. He was never on the continental U.S. Really? Never. But he was, he was a horrible human being. But it's, you know, his, his story is legend in terms of, I mean, it's not real. Yeah. He discovered America and all that stuff. But it's well, so I, it, always, it always bothered me in school when they would say, okay, here's a test. Who discovered America? And I would, as a kid, say, well, how can you discover something when there are already people here? Yeah. Didn't they discover it, you know, when they came across the Bering Straits and, and you know. It's like and weren't the Vikings here first? Well, the Vikings, no, but the, I think the Native Americans were here before that. No, the Native yeah. Americans, but weren't the Vikings the first? Well, they were the first one, supposedly, Leif Erikson. You know, who didn't live here to begin with. Well, they, I don't know how they determined that Columbus discovered America, because you're right about Leif Erikson, of course. But I guess Leif Erikson, because he was Norwegian, wasn't considered Anglo. I don't know what it was, but you know. There wasn't. It's, all, it's all Anglo history. Columbus yeah. had a better press agent. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know the old, the old saying from the movie, uh, Man Who Shot Liberty Valance. Yeah. Yeah. When, you, when there's a difference between a legend and, a, and, and the truth, print the legend. Print the legend. Yeah. And, and that's what back. we did. We printed the legend, only we put it in our history books, and then we put it in tests that we made our students uh, answer the questions to, and if they didn't answer them correctly, we failed them. Yeah. You know, and George Washington chopped down a cherry tree. Mm -hmm. Well, all those things are, <laughs> you know, I never, I never ever believed he chopped down a cherry tree, and if he did, good. I love cherries. And maybe yeah, <laughs> but okay, it was on some test you might have taken in grade school. Yeah, you, you can chop down a fucking cherry tree, and there's so many cherry trees in that area, you're not going to miss it. <laughs> yeah, I can never tell a lie. Okay, George. Right. Well, you lied. You lied about the cherry tree. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> well, he also threw a. Uh, he also threw a dollar, silver dollar across the um, the root. Yeah. 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 Try doing that sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And and how does he? How do they know he actually got it to the other side? Was anybody over there to catch it? <laughs> yeah, a guy. A guy caught it. He put it in the vending machine. Bought a coke. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're pretty, we're probably pretty, told we're them. pretty big when it comes to uh, this kind of thing, to the this kind of lying, as it were. Yeah. There's a whole book about it. What's it called? <laughs> the Bible. Of oh, the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and we're and we're made to believe that. That's got that's got that's gospel truth. Yeah. You know. You know, George Custer was a great general. No, he was an idiot. The reason they went and killed him is he was such a son of a bitch. He went around killing Indians like crazy. Yeah. Or should we say yeah. Native Americans? Some of the best teachers <laughs> teach through metaphor and, and, and parable. Make shit up to get the well, point what, what bothers me is that I was taught all this stuff in school and made to n not necessarily believe it, but give the answer. That. Regurgitate it back. Regurgitate yep. it back. It's like we were a computer. <laughs> they were programming us. Yep. And if the, we didn't uh, act as programmed, then we didn't pass. Yep. So yeah. The kid, I, what? The kids still are doing that too. I, like I told you before, I, I printed out some stuff when they're doing the online learning, and I can see the stuff that they're teaching them. It's the same generalized history. You know, it's just, a lot of it's. Do they still teach or incorrect? Not the details that do we still know. teach Columbus, or do they teach him in a different context? Same, the same. Really? With the, oh yeah. Because I always thought about it, there was like some Native American kid sitting in a class, and he was asked who discovered America. He would have to say, "My people did." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, also, and and I went to a school with a lot of Mexican, and the same sort of thing. You know, their their culture. You know, of California, the history of California. You know, well, this was Mexico. Why are people trying to build a wall and keep us out? You know, those type of things. So yeah, yeah. Well, well, I mean, uh, uh, um, borders change with time, so you you can't exactly argue that one, okay? Uh, but uh, you know, the fact that they do. Um, uh, let me just do something here so I can see what time it is. Okay, there we go. Um, Oh, here comes Al D. Simone. Hold on a second. Let me admit him. Uh, let's hope he's a real person. Al, you there? He's connecting. Oh, he's connecting his audio. Can't exactly argue that one. Okay. Uh, All right, Al. The fact that they turn do down your audio. Uh, let me just do something here so I can see what time it is. It, well, yeah, yeah, Al. Now we need your, We need a picture from you. Um, Aldi Simone, he's got his camera off, okay, asked to start video, okay, I'm asking him to start his video, uh, he just, he, he, he just disappeared. I'm uh, trying to figure out what time it is, use this, my clock, there you go. Your, <laughs> your clock, what, I, oh, <laughs> <laughs> begin with, that's not a clock. It, it, well, it was until they tried to set it for daylight savings time and broke it like that. No, 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 no. That wasn't a clock. I think that was a calendar. It was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. But if it was a calendar, it, 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 it screws up my joke. I knew so that from watching Doctor Who. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, Shecky, how's everything out in, uh, out in, wait a minute. Well, we're having a thunderstorm right now. Mm -hmm. Where are you? Queens. Queens. I can hear the thunderstorm out here, you know. Oh. It's uh, it's it, it. Every now and then I get a thunder rolling through. Is it raining at all? No, no rain yet. Yeah. And I'm waiting for the post office to deliver my Laurel and Hardy Blu-ray set. So big day. Oh, good, good. He's That'll the only guy fun. who still buys Blu-rays, by the way. That's all right. What is it? Every Laurel and Hardy film ever made? No, the recon the reconstructions. Oh. Like, so it's like 15 shorts and two features and like eight hours of extras. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, so you'll have something to watch. Yes. Well, you always have something to watch. Yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> so I have Stargirl to watch today. Yeah. I watched it last night. Um, that's a, that's a, just a nice little show, you know, in a, in its own grisly way. Um, <laughs> Have you heard of this show, the Canadian show Letter Kenny? It's on Hulu. No, no. It, uh, uh, my kid told me I should watch this thing. It is a comedy show, unlike any comedy show. I, I can't describe how absolutely bizarre and funny it's. It takes place in this tiny town in Canada where they all talk funny, mm -hmm. and the, the pace, the rhythm, everything about it is unlike any comedy I've ever seen in my life. It's so wrong. I mean, it's it's. 
it's dirty. It's it's the kind of thing that if they put it on the network here in the states, there'd be <laughs> the women would line Wait, up. What's the them. what's the um, um, what's the name of it again? Letter Kenny. It's the name of a town in Canada. Like like Letter and Kenny is one word. Oh, Letter Kenny. Okay. It's on Hulu, and it's it's Hicks in Ontario, a completely different culture, different, different speech pattern, everything. And Can you understand it or do you have to put the subtitles on? I, I understood it. Because on a lot of British shows now, we're putting the subtitles on. Some of them I do. But this, this one I understood, but it's very fast paced. And you kind of have to, I watched the first episode and went, what am I watching this for? And my <laughs> daughter says, no, you got to watch, got to watch a couple episodes, I promise. I got so hooked, I binge watched every season. Really? And laughed. Wow. And it's, I mean, it's some of the humor, like there's one where they're, they're sitting out in front of their farm and these Mennonites come up with the last name of Dick. And it's, I mean, <laughs> stupid comedy. It's Anita Dick and Noah Dick. And they're looking oh. for their kids that went away on Rumspringa. They, they're looking everywhere. Their little dicks are loose. I mean, and then, <laughs> I mean, it's that kind of stuff. And then at the same time, they're, they're, there's like ragging on each other the hockey it's just all of this really weird so but it's so about, it's so funny you're talking about it being low class humor some of it but most of it isn't oh okay most of it isn't there's there there and, and the the expressions that they use and the com it's just very strange it's worth watching a couple of episodes just to see something well, well, you've never seen before listen to shecky who is uh, perhaps i guess the most knowledgeable person about film that i know I remember that. Yeah. Okay, uh, tell them what series you've been, what different series you're binge watching lately. Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> well, no. you told me you're watching every Kukla Fran and Ollie every oh, day. Oh, yes, seven hundred episodes. Really? Well, they're running them the Birchells from Estate one every night at seven p.m. Where? Um, YouTube. Oh, really? YouTube. Yeah. And they run them at 7 p.m. because that's when it aired originally. Now, does anybody know what we're talking about when we say Kukla, Fran, and sure. Ollie? I do. Yeah. You do. Yeah. Do you, Brian? Was that a puppet thingy? It was a puppet thingy, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Fran was, Fran was a woman, right? <laughs> well, this was so early in television, I would have to say it was the first puppet show on television, wasn't it? Yeah, and she would actually show up like 10 minutes before air, and they just ad, more or less ad libbed the show. Wow. Yeah. And as you know, Alex, she was on Don McNeil's Breakfast Club. Right, right. That was the and show. So, what I was, was it? Aunt Franny, I think, was her name mm -hmm. on that? Yeah, I used to listen to that in the morning when I was a kid because at about halfway through the show, the band struck up a march and you marched around the breakfast table. <laughs> and I would march around the breakfast table when they had you marching around the be breakfast table. So and how many hours? How many hours do you have of this? Of of, of what? The Breakfast Club? No, the oh, oh, Kuka, uh, and an Ollie. Yeah. Well, they're up to February nineteen fifty at the moment. Mm. Now, when did the show end? Well, it went back. It ended on the network around fifty seven, but then it kept coming back on like PBS and stuff. Yeah. Because the producer of the show, Beulah Zachary, mm -hmm. died in a plane crash in the East River. Oh, wow. And um, Bert Telstrom went into a major funk. Really? Yeah, she had come, she was coming to New York to arrange a tour at a Broadway theater for the show. And the plane crashed trying to land at LaGuardia. Wow. <laughs> I just searched it on YouTube. And the Kukla Friend and Ali of 1950, it has 689 subscribers to the YouTube page. Yeah. Not one of them. Is that all? Well, it's the, I think it's, it's relatively new as a page. He's describing it. They've only uploaded, um, it says, join us every night, 7 p.m. So it's, it's only been on, well, no, it says that they, the page. I think they there. started it's, it in February, maybe. It says here October of 2010. Maybe because I've got. Uh, oh, there's more. I've got 1,059, 57, but that's only because I would have more, except that YouTube suddenly robbed me of 50 of them. 
But again, you don't have to subscribe to watch it on YouTube. You can just go to YouTube, yeah, put it in, and watch yeah. an episode. Yeah. yeah, and they're all being archived on YouTube, so you don't have to watch it at seven p.m. So, yeah. so you can watch all the past ones they put up. Yes, they're all there. Because wow. yeah. I'm like six weeks behind right now. Now, but you know, as I remember the show, because I was a, I guess, a teenager when it first came out. Uh, I re it started when in 53, 52? No, 49. 49. Actually, 48, but it went to the network, 49. Okay, so I was nine years old when it went on TV. So as I remember it, I, I, it wasn't that much different from day to day. It was pretty much the same show. Well, as I said, they would just, can I call it screw around? You know. Yeah, yeah. You know, and Tilstrom played all the, cat. you know, all the puppets. Now, my favorite show, puppet show at that time, was Time for Beanie. Yeah. Which was, uh, was Stan, West Coast Freeberg, show, Stan Freeberg and Dawes Butler did it. And it was a, and puppet, show. It was a puppet show. That one I never heard of. Well, <laughs> late, later on, they did an animated version called Cecil and Beanie, but that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, Beanie and Cecil. The puppet show, which was, yeah. I think, it was phenomenal. And they used to write that show in the back seat of Freeberg's car. <laughs> and then they would go into the studio and do it. That's, That's how they did that one. These were the early days of television. This was Kuka Fran Ali was 15 minutes, right? 30 minutes, and then it went to 15 minutes. 30 when it's 30 started. minutes for the first couple of years. Oh, yeah, really? that's what it shows here. And then it went to 15 minutes. Why? When it, yeah. went, when it went on the full network, maybe? No, I just think at some point they decided to make it 15 minutes. Now, who who was first? Kukul Fran and Ollie or Howdy Doody? Boy, are we getting... <laughs> I think Howdy Doody I was a radio show. Hmm? Local Chicago, it was Kukul Fran and Ollie. But for the network, it was Howdy Doody. Yeah, because I remember that when I was a kid and we got our first television set, TV went on at, I think, 5 o'clock. And Howdy Doody was the first show on every day. Yeah, hmm. and I think Howdy Doody was 40, Christmas 48, maybe it was, or something like that. Yeah. Wasn't it a radio show first? I remember the comedians making a joke about only, only in radio would they have a ventriloquist where you could tell you. Well, that, was, that, was, that, was, that was like the Bergen. That was like the Bergen. <laughs> the old joke was when you were a kid, and they also said this uh, in, uh, I think, Woody Allen's uh, radio days. How do they know his lips aren't moving? Yeah, well, right. you, Bergen, that's all his lips did. It was moved, yeah. 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 So what came next, Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop? That was 60s, wasn't it? That yeah, was mm -hmm. maybe 59, 60. Yeah. But she was only like 22 years old when she started doing that TV show. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I never liked that act much. Though. Me neither. Yeah. My mother told me I used to hate Captain Kangaroo for some <laughs> reason. I don't know why, but... Well, you didn't well, get a little a thing from Mr. Green Jeans? <laughs> What's that, any of that? You didn't get a little thing from Mr. Green Jeans? Yeah, uh, no, no. Well, he started out as Clarabelle the Clown on Howdy Doody. Yeah. Right. And then he started <laughs> his own show. And that thing went on. That, that thing went on for, what, 20 years? Yeah. 55 to mid-70s. And then yeah. all of a sudden, see, <clears throat> that, wait a minute. They got the Today Show over at NBC. They're making a fortune with that. And they have something else over at ABC. They're making a fortune with that. And, and they were stuck the, with Captain Kangaroo. And, and they got this kid <laughs> show on. And the kid show, this show went on like at 8 o'clock in the morning. 8 o'clock. So it was like if they wanted to do a show from 7 to 8, they would have to stop it for the puppet show. <laughs> yeah. And they finally, they canceled them because they just wanted the the the. the, the the acreage was worth too much. You wanted the real estate. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that was the end of uh, Captain Kangaroo. Yeah. Bob Keishan. So I think he went to PBS also for a while. Is that where old kid shows go to die? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I was explaining to my grandkids about Saturday morning cartoons. And they couldn't, they couldn't understand it. Why right. would you have to wait till Saturday? Right. Boomerang and all these other cartoon networks have been around for, for what, 30 years now? Yeah, right, right. 20-something right. years. But I remember getting up yeah, at that was a big five, thing. six in the morning waiting for the first cartoons to come on. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah created Brothers. by Agriculture USA. What? Yeah. Agriculture USA used to be on like 6.30 Saturday before the cartoons started. Right. Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, hey, you wait to hear the pork bellies and then you watch cartoons. <laughs> Son of a bitch. That's but it. also that was the era of Chuck McCann and people, you know, introducing cartoons mm. during the day. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Joe Bolton doing the Three Stooges or wherever your local person was, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In San Francisco, you see, you know all these people in New York. I got the Chuck McCann got to be a very good friend of mine uh, when I was when I was living here in New York. And um, in fact, the last time I contacted him, I think it was on Facebook between he and I, a couple of years back before he died. But. I didn't know any of these people. So everybody goes, oh, well, everyone had their local uncle, whoever. Yeah, you know. but you know Chuck McCann, huh? And they were all amazed. And I'm going, yeah, I know Chuck McCann. I, I, I didn't, it didn't register with me. It just like there were other guys here and there. Sonny Fox. Yeah. I didn't know from Sonny Fox. You guys don't know from uh, uh, Mayor Art, who was in right. San Francisco. Yeah. Well, that's what I mean. You had your local uncle if i want to call it that or local yeah. kitty host yeah mm -hmm. you know, like you wouldn't know sandy becker as an example well, and well, usually they were the local announcers and then you know at three o'clock jack mccarthy would put on a captain's suit and he'd be captain jack for 30 minutes showing papa <laughs> yeah so i you know i um uh i didn't know these people i mean like for instance one of my best friends because I worked with him and he was we hung out and everything else is Zachary. Well yeah I didn't know from Zach I just knew Zachary as a guy I worked with. You know, it was a disc jockey. Right. But he hosted the, the horror films in New York. Yeah, I didn't know from him from the horror films. No, I mean I learned that he had done the horror films and so on. And I maybe vaguely heard the name when I lived in California, but you know But they were all local. Yeah. Yeah. When, when I was a kid in Cleveland, there was a guy on Saturdays called Superhost, and he put on this stupid-looking Superman outfit and was the host of TV shows. When I met my wife in Brazil, I met her dad, mm -hmm. and he when he found out I was from Cleveland, he had been on television as the tra Captain Zero. He copied Superhost from something that they had seen, and he was their Brazil's Superhost in the south of Brazil as the local TV. Oh, well, in San Francisco, we had a Captain Zero. Yeah. But it was, he knew of Superhost, and he said that was part of how we made the costume was we had this picture. I can't believe you're from Cleveland. By the <laughs> way, folks, I'm, I'm wearing shorts. Woo-hoo! Woo! In case they saw. At least shorts. you're wearing pants. <laughs> yeah, exactly. we're, wearing. we're supposed to wear pants? <laughs> well, I, a, few, a few days ago, I, I looked at Marjorie, and I went, do you realize we haven't put our pants on in four days? You know, we just, it's, it, there's no reason to do anything else. We just sit around here uh, for, for fun. Our big thing is killing mice. And your shorts fit still? No problem? Well, the shorts are still fitting. Yeah. Okay. Just checking. Yeah. <laughs> I, listen, it, between the operation and, and, and being indoors for five months, mm. okay, uh, it's hard not to put on weight, you know? It's really okay. I gotta take off, guys. Huh? I'm gonna take off. Oh yeah, they're, you got. One. They're they're doing something down there. I need to be involved. I think so. <laughs> okay, that's Brian Neary. Okay. Thank you, Brian. I'll see you tomorrow uh, night. See you tomorrow night. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah. You know, it's. He's, I, he's I think got, I've washed three pair of socks in four months. I never put them. I don't think I've worn socks in three months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Marjorie uh, 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 and uh, we we. Yes, what was it? A couple of days ago, she said, look, and there was a dead mouse. One of them had finally eaten the, the poison that we put in every corner of this apartment, right? Mm. So we figured we got rid of it. No, the next day, there are more turds in the cabinets, mouse turds. So today, she opens up the dishwasher, and a mouse comes scurrying around the dishwasher and she <laughs> goes and gets a pair of tongs grabs him and crushes his head good for her and throws him and throws it in the garbage can i said you really don't have to kill it you can just throw it out the window yeah. yeah there's there's this incredible mouse trap you get a bucket and you put this much water on the bottom of it and it has a little like a, a drawbridge mm -hmm. and the mouse goes up to get the thing and they fall in the bucket 
And there's guys on YouTube that have put those things in barns and killed 20, mi 20 mice in an evening. Really? Yeah, it, as soon as their weight gets on the thing, it drops them right into the water and they can't get out. Are we doing something kind of uh, uh, un-PC here by talking about how to kill mice? No. No. No, nobody cares about saving. If, you're, if we were talking about killing people's pets, it would be a different story. Yeah. yeah. Not disease-ridden rodents. These are rodents. So uh, how, how do you feel about uh, the president of Mount Rushmore? Did you see that picture he had taken of him being the other face on Mount Rushmore? Did you see that? <laughs> There's a, like a little space over to the right. And they took the picture with his face there, his real face, and the mountain in back of him. And it looks like he's on Mount Rushmore. Yeah, well, they also made one with uh, with Bill Cosby and Epstein and Trump, yeah. I think, as well. Wow. It, it, Come it, on, Trump is the greatest president we've ever <coughs> had. You actually have friends that believe that, Shecky. You've told me. I have, no yes, people. I do. Yes, I do. Can you I have a lot of friends that believe that. And by the way, I know your friends, and they're not stupid people. Or are they? No. No. You know, my, my friend used to hang out at the Playboy Mansion four nights a week. And you, Hefner, was not a conservative. Right. <laughs> so, and they think, he thinks that Trump is the best president we've ever had? Yes, he does. Does he cite why, or do you just not want to get into the argument with him? He'll post on Facebook, but I will not discuss it with him. You will not discuss it with him? Because I what's the point? Yeah. I have friends that constantly post positive stuff about shithead. Yep. I just don't, I don't enter into the kind of, no. well, they'll comment on one of mine and I have to say something back, but there's, there's, there's no died to the wool Trump supporter that's going to change his mind because I tell him to. No, I never posted anything political on Facebook, as you know, nope. Ben. Yeah. Never do that. Yeah. Um, I stop, I tell you, I stopped doing it because every time I do, I lose about 10 people. <laughs> no, matter, no matter what I say, I could say it's sunny today and I'll lose 10 people. Well, Alex, you know, I, I've always been a conservative Republican. Mm -hmm. And yet I listened to you for 15 years mm -hmm. and you were exactly opposite of everything I believed in at that time. And I still listen to you because I valued your opinion. And you were, you were allowed to have your opinion and mm -hmm. I had mine. And I still listen to you and I didn't well, care about that. But isn't that what it's all about? Yes. You know, isn't that what it should be? That doesn't exist anymore. It's us against them. Yeah. Well, I have changed my views dramatically in the last few years, obviously. What, what do you mean you've changed your views? In what way? Are you more to uh, the left I, now? Or? Yes, very much so. I mean, I, I wouldn't vote for Donald Trump if my life depended on it at this point. You know, yeah. and, and your life I've does never... depend. And your life does depend on it. <laughs> it does. <laughs> it does. So you vote for Kanye West. Oh, well, you know, and that scares me too because that's going to split the Democratic vote. Well, no, I don't. Quite no, honestly, I I don't think he's serious. Well, you know? well, I just saw it just came up on the on the little bug on the on the TV that, that he did announce, but I don't think he's filed the paperwork in enough states to make a difference. He, well, no, he run as an independent or a write-in candidate. Yeah, that's he, not going to do. Well, well he's you know, an album coming. The ballot, Look, he has a party that's with it, that's registered. It's willing to put him as their candidate. Uh, well, you could argue. You could argue that I want something new. I don't want the same old, same old. Well, that's why people voted for Trump, and look what we got. Right. You know, I mean, uh, uh, y y and I just don't think that's a wise idea. I would not vote for Kanye West. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I don't know. I don't know anyone in my circle that thought that Biden was the best candidate. But, 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 but who else is there? Nonetheless, if, if there's there's I, I can't think of anyone worse than Trump. Right. They could run. I mean, there's people that are horror. Hor I mean, if Carl well, Rove ran for office, it'd be a tough decision if it was Rove against Trump. What do you do? But, well, you know, I mean, he isn't my idea of somebody that I would vote for president. Biden. But on the other hand, he's not so terrible that I won't. Right. You know, well, I mean, Trump, I just can think of better people who could be running. I think yeah. Cuomo would be a much better presidential candidate right now. 
but part of the reason why Trump got in is because people were voting against Hillary. Yeah. That's I mean, what it was, absolutely. Now, here's, you know, here's so, where we missed our big bet, de Blasio for president. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, right. Trump could have beat him. <laughs> Maybe, you know. How, you know something, Shecky always used to always complain to me about how much he hated de Blasio. And I never paid much attention to de Blasio, but I've had to pay attention to him now. And he is terrible. <laughs> he is just horrendous. Wow. Would you not agree, Shecky? Of course you'd agree. Well, you know what I say. I can't stand Trump and I hate de Blasio. So I'm, you know, conservative, <laughs> liberal. Well, which, which Trump's using the term which which is worse hating or not liking <laughs> uh, i guess hating i mean de blasio do the police do anything in new york city besides choke people to death <laughs> because i gotta tell you the fireworks that have been going off for the last two weeks three weeks four weeks in this yeah. town and it's not like it's not like the cops wouldn't sit there and go, well, you know, you'll have to give us an address. Why don't you just listen and follow the flares? Well, I told you yesterday on the phone, de Blasio told them to stand down. Mm. On the fireworks? On the fireworks. Do you know the other morning, this was 4th of July morning, I guess, Marjorie did not get any sleep because there were so many fireworks going off in this neighborhood till 5 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? It was, it was like a war zone around here, too. You know, I can say, okay, have your fun till midnight. Goodbye. Now let us all go to sleep. But yeah. no, and I mean, there was one out here that sounded like I thought the neighborhood was blowing up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're out there with M80s and, you know, which were almost dynamite. But also yeah. the fireworks, these big fireworks displays. I mean... I don't, yeah. I don't know where these people get this stuff. Pennsylvania. Oh, that, oh, is, Pennsylvania. Oh, that right? the, the, their Apparently, they're the, trucks that bring them in from Pennsylvania. In yeah. Ohio, we have a thing called the law. It's called the liar's law. So you can buy fireworks. There's fireworks places all over. They're illegal to fire in the U.S. I mean, you know, in the state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. So you have to sign a document that says you're taking them out of state, and then they can sell them to you. And everyone <laughs> who signs the document is lying. Oh, and really? Then, Call it the liar's law. The court calls oh, it. Have you got pants on? Do you have pants on? Do you have your pants on? You don't have pants on. <laughs> in your underpants. They just saw you. What are you going to have to announce it? She's I got her pants. Jeez, Marjorie. Jeez, as long as she doesn't get up on the table and dance, we're good. You knew I was doing a show in here. You want to. Say, what do you mean? I told you I was doing a show. <laughs> Listen to her. Listen to I'm, I'm curious, Alex. If you looking looking at the the front runners in the VP slot, mm -hmm. is there any of them that appeal to you that you think in the VP slot? Yeah, well, I could go with Kamala Harris. Oh no, you know I, I have a friend that uh, that worked for her when she was oh, okay. Uh, Wait a minute, she's covering herself. Watch this. She's got her iPad. Watch this. You're gonna, you're gonna love this. You're gonna love guys. this. <laughs> okay, you're okay. I'm blocking you now. Okay. Bye. <laughs> I, I had a friend that worked in the uh, uh, the attorney general's office in San Francisco, and when he worked for her, and he just told me she is just she, not a good one. <laughs> she was the district attorney. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I quite frankly, what I what bothered me about Biden was him saying, and, and when asked once, what who are you going to get as your vice presidential nominee if you're nominated. Yeah. And he said, I'm going to get myself a woman. Yeah. Well, to begin with, that's being sexist. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't want sure. to have him determine ahead of time that he's locking himself into getting a woman yeah. if there's a guy who can do a better job. Yeah, Ber yeah. Bernie sort of pushed him into that, which was funny. Yeah. He was in the debate when Bernie said, would you commit to yeah. having? Yes, I'll commit. And then it was kind of like, oh, shit, now I have to. Yeah. yeah. It was an okay Kamala moment, Harris, say. <laughs> yeah, Kamala Harris, every time I talk to my, my the black people in my family about her, they all say the same thing. In the black community, everybody calls her the police. She was, huh. Oh, okay. They, yeah. They, they yeah, I can see it. That. I can see it. I, well, I don't know. I mean, when you asked me, I just said Kamala Harris, yeah. but I was thinking of the Well, first. today they were talking about Tammy Duckworth again, that she's a front runner. 
Yeah. But her problem is, this is a political contest and she can't run. Yes. <laughs> well, she was born in Thailand. She's an oh. American citizen. You, you, didn't, you didn't get the joke, did you? Oh, no, I got it. I just... Oh, okay. It was a very bad joke. It was in bad taste. Well, sometimes people tell jokes that just don't have legs, so nobody gets it. <laughs> it, it the joke... You're worse than it. I am. It could not, that joke could not stand on its own. It would have to be part of other things. Oh, films. come on. <laughs> Are we going to keep up with this, Andrew? If you make me. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to walk if you guys don't quit this stuff. I'm uh, she's not. Yeah. She's not. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think, uh, I don't know, a good, who would I put as a good candidate? Eh. I don't know. Someone's got to give him a leg up. I don't like it, and many people in the Democratic Party either. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of Cuomo's now. Yeah. And I'm a, I wasn't a big fan of his, but have you become a bigger fan of his, Shecky, since this whole thing started? I have always liked him, but he's a bit of a demagogue also. And that whole nursing home thing, which I don't know if that was his fault, you know, sending the corona patients to the nursing homes. Well, no, what, yeah. he, what he did was what the CDC recommended. The government recommended that. And then when he- Okay, but he could thought, have overruled it. But he saw what a mistake it was. And he, he then said, the only thing that the, the, these nursing homes, if they were sending them back after, he said, what happened was people would go from the nursing homes into the hospitals. They would be there for a couple of weeks and then they got better, but they would, didn't test negative because they were still, you know, had it in their system. or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. they sent them back to the, to the, uh, because they could, they needed the, the hospital beds. Okay. They sent them back to the homes, but if the homes didn't want to take them, he said the state had places they could put these people. They didn't have to take them, but that they were only going <laughs> by CDC guidance. That's all, you know. Yeah. No, I'm very fond of Andrew Cuomo, basically. Yeah, you know, I think he's done a great job of this whole thing. Well, when you look at what's going on this last weekend in Florida and places, and for whatever it is, we had very few new cases in New York State. I saw that moron they have as a governor down there giving a thing today, and I'm going, geez, this guy still doesn't get it. Yeah. You know, he still doesn't get it. They're so staunchly Republican that they think that the idea of wearing a mask is, is, is against the Republican mantra. And, and it's ridiculous, you know. Shit, shit for brains isn't wearing one either. You know, he, he never wears one. Pence at least wears one every once in a while. The but. assistant shit for brains does wear one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But he prayed on it, so it's okay. Huh? He prayed on it. He prayed on it. Yeah. And now he's praying. You know, and then, you know, Trump's son's girlfriend they're driving back from south dakota because she's got it you know yeah so they think yeah. every, at every stop along the way this is why all these other states their numbers are rising is they're infecting the population <laughs> as they go oh my god are they back in washington yet well what was it saturday friday so you would assume by now they'd be back there should have been a thing like follow you know don trump jr is it trump jr the it was Don Trump Jr., yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Alex, would, would you agree with the statement that, that he needs to pick somebody that we can all envision as a president? I think Absolutely. Is, I think that, so, that yeah. really at, at the core. And that yesterday on all the news shows, they were talking Susan Rice, too. Susan Rice, I think, is not a bad idea. I think, I think that's I mean, what I'm leaning towards. I mean, when you're talking about if something should happen to Biden, which is possible. I mean, the guy is 78. 78. Okay. Um, uh, if Rice became president, she's been in enough positions in the government to know how to do the job. Okay. Whereas I don't think a lot of these other people do. I don't think senators necess necessarily know how to do the job or Congress. Mm -hmm. Governors do. To short jump to be president from being governor, you're doing the same thing. You're administering a municipality, you know? Yeah. Yep. But, More buttons to push. but I think Susan Rice would be, I think, yeah, she'd be the best bet for vice president. Yeah. yeah. I was in the, in the primaries, I was, I was hoping for Elizabeth Warren, but as I, I, I've met her before. She's brilliant. She may be brilliant, but I didn't like her that much. No. 
Yeah, I felt she was a little. She's in her seventies, also. I mean, again, another yeah. older person. But how, how he's going to have to pick somebody with a little melanin. To, to yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, but I I find that wrong. I do too. I find no. that wrong that that's your that's your guiding principle because that's racist. Okay, that what you should do is say who's the best person for this job. Now Susan Rice happens to be eminently qualified for the job. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's the most qualified. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think it, talking about the, that uh, I can't think of her name. Um, who was the? She's a congresswoman and she was the head of the Orlando Police Department for a number of years. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can't think of her name, but that won't. Yes. Dev or I can't think of it. It's 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 in my head, but I can't get it out. And I was like, that's just a black woman pick. She she could she could do the job, but she's not going to excite people to go out and vote. Yeah, I think Susan Rice is the right pick. That was. At, at the, 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 I'd say I'd say if there was, if there was a sweet spot in that, Susan Rice would be it. I think she could turn around our issues with Europe and, and our other allies that are now, now not wanting to talk to us. I think in the first hundred she days- had, She had some gaffe back uh, when the CIA gave her the wrong information on something. So that's yeah. what she was touting. Oh, that the, the cartoons about, uh, about Muhammad were what causing uh, the burning down yeah. of places like Benghazi and so on and so forth. And uh, they could bring that back, but, you know, she wasn't guilty of anything there. She was just listening to what the CIA told her. She had the best, the best guess at the moment as to why it was happening. Yeah. You know, at least she reads her papers they give her as opposed to someone else who doesn't. Is it true? I heard that he has to have cartoons drawn. <laughs> <What? heard. laughs> By the way, have you seen this new John Stewart movie? Yes. Did you like it? No. No? <laughs> No, I, I thought it was. I, I only got about a third of the way through, and then I turned it off. You got to see the ending. It's a complete twist. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll go back and watch it. I got nothing else to do. I'm sitting well, watch here. it all the way to the end. <laughs> here with my... One of the greatest, not not to ruin the movie, but there, there's a pretty girl and hit and the guy, yeah. and at the end, when the resolution happens at the end of the film, which is nothing that you're expecting, yeah. He kind of, there's like this scene where he's almost like going to say, well, now the pretty girl, and she turns to him and goes, I'm, I'm 29 years old. In what world would that ever happen? <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the movie completely destroys the entire political system for both sides. And it, it, it basically, the movie exposes what, what, what they call the pundit economy. Wow. If you don't watch it all the way to the end, because I watched the movie, was like, why am I watching this? You know, I got nothing else to do with my miserable life here except stick my finger <laughs> up my ass and see if I can feel my cancer. You know. Oh, God. <laughs> I hear if you tickle it, it grows slower. Really? Oh, okay. It feels loved. Yeah. 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 I still haven't heard from my doctor about a, PT, T, P, T, a T, <laughs> CT scan. Uh, but uh, uh, what the hell? If he doesn't care, I don't care. <laughs> if you if you watch it to the end, just shoot me a note and tell me if you agree. Okay, that I'll I'll give it a right. shot. I mean, I, I I've thought about going back to it just for the hell of going back to it. You know, it just got yeah. terrible reviews all the way around. Yeah. If you watch it through the end, you'll. I think most most reviews don't get through the whole movie anyhow. <laughs> and if we were to watch a silent film tonight, uh, Shecky, what silent film should we watch? Well, I'll probably watch Battle of the Century again. Mm-hmm. Lost Lowell and Hardy. Oh, okay. oh, The Crowd. The Crowd. The Crowd's such a great film. Such a great film. See, these well, are I'll watch TPM, of the course. The thing is, there are people who will not watch silent films. That's most people. And the fact is, some of the best films ever made were silent films. You know? And uh, The Crowd happens to be exceptional. Just exceptional. Hmm. Kind of like Mel Brooks' silent movie. <laughs> yeah, and we, we lost Carl Reiner, of course. Yeah. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Did you ever meet him at all? Uh, no, Alex? never met him. No. Oh. Absolute brilliance, the guy was. One of the yeah. guys I never interviewed. You know, huh. I suppose if if he had lived longer, I would have eventually gotten around to him. But <laughs> yeah, I've, done, I've done Mel Brooks. You know. Oh, really? Yeah. Years ago. Hey, listen, uh, our time has run out here. I I only do an hour of this because at my age, I'm pooped. 
Um, <laughs> but I thank you for being here. It's been a nice, this is just nice. You know, that's what yeah. I like about doing these things on Mondays. I just do them because they're, they're, it's a friendly group. It's a no brainer, you know. You know and it's, after listening to you for 15 or 20 years or whatever, and now I'd be able to actually talk to you. Yeah. It really does make a difference. And I do appreciate you doing these very much. Oh, well, I, uh, I appreciate you coming on and being part of it. Andrew Deutsch, uh, Len, and say hello to Barb. I will. <laughs> and, of course, my old friend. The only, Shecky is my best friend. I have no others left. They've all died. Okay. Well, yeah. So, what? I just went, yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> here's, here's, here is only one responsibility in life to stay alive. Outlive yeah. him. <laughs> so I can say my best friend, Shecky. Otherwise, what am I going to say? My best friend, Tony? No. Uh, that's a personal. Oh, Tony said plans on coming this weekend. Uh. Okay. All right. If you're watching. Yeah, he's coming Tony, to visit. <laughs> and yeah. here, see, I don't have the beard. See what happened? <laughs> I accidentally cut it off. So, But it'll grow back in a couple of days. And uh, I hope maybe if we do this again next week, you'll all uh, all join us. Thank it's you so much, day. everybody. I Thanks, really Alex. appreciate Have a good day. it. And thank you to everybody for uh, uh, joining us as well. Uh, uh, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you soon. Okay. Uh, thank Very you. good. If you see her, yeah. tell her to put her underpants on. Okay. <laughs> bye, everybody. Okay. Right. And I'll stop the recording too. So.